17 rules you should never break to rank up in Rocket League. Well, today I'm approaching 10,000 combined hours playing, coaching, and video making in this game. And if someone would have told me these rules before I tried to grind a GC, I would have ranked up two times faster than everyone else. Mistake number one, always cheat up on 2v2 kickoffs. The reason it's better to position close to the kickoff after it happens is because it is a massive advantage to be the first person to get to the ball after kickoff. If you and your opponent both cheat up, it's even. And if you and your opponent both go back for corner boost, it's also even. But if you go back for your corner boost and your opponent cheats up on the kickoff, you're going to have to play defense for the first play of the game. And if there's one thing I've learned from high rank 2v2 is it's always better to have possession and be the one attacking. Because I would always rather be the first person attacking than the first person defending. When I'm trying to rank up, I always cheat up on 2v2 kickoffs. And if you're solo queuing, you should do the same. For all you you platinums, diamonds, and champs out there. Update, our coaching sponsor just hired four new RLCS coaches and are now reopen for coaching. I'll show some of the coaches on screen here, but if that's you and you're plat through champ and sick of solo queuing, DM our coaching sponsor on Discord with the keyword coach4 to see if you might qualify for coaching. That's keyword coach4 and back to the mistakes. Rule number two, nothing good happens in the corners. Corners at the the low ranks of Rocket League are sort of like a black hole. Once you get sucked in, you cannot escape. If you enter the corner, your camera is going to be confusing. The ball is going to take all sort of weird bounces. For a new player, your whole world is just going to turn upside down. But what I've found coaching low rank players is if you can just resist the urge and stay outside the corner, and this goes for offense and defense, you realize not much bad can happen as long as you keep your distance. If you just stay out of the corners and watch from a safe distance, 90% of players at the low ranks completely eliminate themselves from the play and give you free goals. Stay out of corners, get free MMR. Rule number three, the left goes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's an unspoken rule in Rocket League, doesn't matter where you're playing from. If two players spawn equidistant from the kickoff, the person on the left always goes. If you're playing 2v2, just remember, left goes, and you're going to save yourself from a lot of stupid kickoff goals. Rule number four, you can always drive forward. A mistake I've I've probably seen over 200 times coaching the low ranks is pushing too close to the play and driving too far forward. I think when new players come to Rocket League, they think this game is like soccer, where it's good to be as close as possible to the opponent's goal. But let me tell you from my almost 4,000 in-game hours, this is not true. In Rocket League, it's much easier to drive forward than it is backward. So for every car length you push up forward, you lose out on a massive amount of coverage in front of you. The rule you need to remember is you can always drive forward. I promise the play will come to you. Rule number five, rotate up and down the field in circles, not straight lines. In real life, the fastest distance between two points is a straight line. But since in Rocket League, we have this thing called boost and this thing called rotations, sometimes the fastest route between two points in Rocket League is actually an arc instead of a straight line. This might sound crazy, but let me just give you an example. Most of the time, when you enter a play in your opponent's corner, let's say into the top right corner, you want to rotate back across your opponent's net and come back from the top left corner instead of coming back exactly where you came from. This is because when you rotate up and down the field in straight lines in Rocket League, you might think you're playing fast, but because you're in a car, you have to constantly stop and start. Not to mention, you're going to be missing out on boost and potentially ramming into your teammates who are trying to go for the ball after you. So trust me on this, rotate up and down the field in arcs as opposed to straight lines. And remember, to always exit the play from the opposite side you entered. I'm not saying you always have to rotate like this, but this is the correct answer to rotations 90% of the time. Rule number six, always hold power slide when you land. The reason pro recoveries are so smooth is because they always tap power slide when they land. So just remember, if you're ever bumped or landing from a wall or landing from an aerial, hold power slide when you land to preserve your momentum as you transition to the ground. And this will make your recoveries three times as fast. Rule number 
seven is don't quick chat spam your teammates. If you want the quickest way to get people to dislike you, it's to use the quick chat on your own teammates. It might feel good in the moment to what a save your teammate after he missed, but trust me, the only thing that's worse than a 2v1 in Rocket League is a 3v1. So please don't tilt your teammate. He doesn't need your help. Number eight, defend from the side of your net. Because it's easier to cover shots in front of you than ones behind you, 90% of the time you should be defending from the side of your net. The opposite of this, and the worst way you can defend at the low ranks, is defending from the center inside your net. Your backboard is completely uncovered if you're sitting in the middle of your net. Remember to always defend from the side of your net. And trust me, if you do this right, your net will become literally unscorable for people below diamond. Rule number nine, waiting with a teammate behind you. Since you watch my videos, I know you're somebody that plays Rocket League smart, but a mistake I see some of my viewers make is thinking being passive is the same thing as being smart. Let me explain. If you're defending and the opponents are dribbling on you, let's say you're first in line to go for the ball and you have a teammate back post. As the first man, you have to challenge the ball. The worst thing you can do is wait with a teammate behind you. You see, the more you wait to challenge when somebody is behind you, the more awkward you're rotation becomes and the more space you give to your opponents. So remember, drive challenge, apply some pressure, or at least do something to force the opponent to make a play. Rule number 10, safe mechanics work better at lower ranks. I get it. We all want to be Justin going for aerial redirects, but the truth is safer mechanics are better at the lower ranks. The reason I would tell you to go for safe mechanics is because your recoveries are not as good as Zen's. Yes, Zen can get away with going for crazy double flip resets because he just bounces off the opponent's backboard and he's back post in a second and a half. But unfortunately, your champ two teammate, he's out of the play for at least four seconds after. So unless your recoveries are buttery smooth, stick to safe mechanics that you can actually recover from. And trust me, you're going to see way better results in ranked. Rule number 11, low ranks force the ball low, high ranks force the ball high. So when I'm talking about low versus high ranks, I'm generally talking about champ below for low ranks, champ above for high ranks. Just humor me for sake of example. What I'm talking about here is when and how you should challenge for the best results in ranked. Let me start with my bracket, the higher ranks. When I was playing high ranked games with the pro player Rapid, he taught me that it's better to force your opponent to take the ball high at the high ranks. The reason for this is because you never want to let a high ranked player fake you. They then have a completely free one-on-one -on -one and they're probably going to score on your teammate. So high ranks, you want to force your opponent who's air dribbling or going for a flip reset to go above you, ideally taking the ball to the backboard on an air dribble. That way your teammate can get a free backboard clear. However, if you're at the low ranks, I recommend you challenge the opponent early and cover the high option. The reason is because low rank players usually won't fake you. So long as you cover the high option, your opponent is going to be able to clean up any 50-50 or any scenario where they get under you. If you really don't believe me and you want to see what I mean in practice, go to my video called 30 Days Playing With Pros and you'll see examples of this and why it works in ranked. I'm not saying this will always work, but I'm saying most of the time, if you listen to that rule, you will guess the right answer. Rule number 12, rotate back on the weak side. You are rotating back to your side of the field and the opponents are taking the ball into your corner where your teammates defending. Most low rank players make the mistake here of trying to go into their corner. When you rotate this way, you're moving in the direction your opponents are moving in. And if they get by your teammate and you, then that's wide open. Instead, 90% of the time at the low ranks, you wanna rotate back on the weak side. When you rotate back post, on the opposite side of the ball, you're able to cover your entire net in front of you and you make it so the opponents have to come to you to score a goal. I know it's tempting to want to drift towards the ball at all times, but remember, rotate back on the weak side. And if you do this right, defense will become a breeze. Rule number 13, the pass isn't coming. If you're watching below champ three, just assume the pass isn't coming. What is the chance that your teammate sees you and effectively places a good pass? So trust me, if you want to rank up, 
especially in ranked 2v2. Don't expect him to pass it. Just get behind your teammate because unfortunately the pass isn't coming. Oh, and bonus tip, you only have to follow this rule if you're solo queuing. If you find a good teammate, you will literally just rank up. So if you're in the market for actually good teammates, join my Discord down below. We've got over 50,000 players. It's completely free and you can leave whenever you want. Moving on to rule number 14, don't boost through supersonic. If you didn't know, you don't actually have to boost to maintain your speed in Rocket League. If you don't believe me, go into free play and you'll find that as long as you hold down drive and you don't turn too aggressively, you can maintain supersonic with zero boost usage. Rule number 15, delay your takeoff as long as possible. A routine mistake I see people make all the way up at the grand champ ranks is taking off for aerials too soon. What I mean by this is the new players seem to like to jump the minute the ball goes in the air. Whenever you're going for an aerial, you want to get as close to the play as possible on the ground and then wait till the last possible second until you need to take off. Delaying your takeoff like this will save you so many wasted aerials and allow you to actually change your mind if the ball gets redirected or you decide you need to go back. So remember, delay your takeoff to the last possible second and you're going to be twice as fast as everybody at the low ranks. Rule number 16, make your first touch away from the opponent. When I was scripting this video, the first thing I wanted to tell you was to stop booming the ball away. But to be honest, I don't even feel good telling you to stop booming the ball because one of the best ways to rank up in like lat and diamond is to just boom the ball. But once you get to like diamond and even champ and grand champ, controlling the ball becomes more important. Otherwise, you're never going to score. And if you want my golden rule for learning how to control the ball better in Rocket League, it's this. Always make your first touch away from the opponent. So for example, instead of getting the ball and slamming it into your opponent's corner, if both you and your opponent are on the left side of the field in a 1v1, you want to make your first touch to the right side across the field away from your opponent before you start attacking. The reason this is so effective is because when you make your first touch away from the opponent, you move the ball through open space one, but you also buy yourself more time to start a dribble or start a carry or a flick or whatever you want to go for. You just get more time to set it up and make sure it works. Rule number 17, the final rule, don't flip during collisions. This is a rule I first learned from Wait and Pilkin three or four years ago when I was a champ. And guess what? I was reminded of this rule 12 months ago as a Grand Champ 3 by apparently Jack. So if there's anything close to a golden rule of Rocket League, it's this. Don't flip during collisions. Basically, a collision is any time one or more players are making a play on the ball and it's unclear where the ball is going to go next. So let's say a 50-50 is about to happen. A collision is about to happen on the ball and you don't know whether your teammate's going to win it or it's going to go back to your side of the field. In these situations, it's critical that you don't flip during the collision. The reason is because if you flip before you know where the ball's going to go, you could end up committing your car in a direction for two seconds that's completely opposite the way the play actually goes. Now, it might seem like, oh, if I flip forward and my teammate ends up getting dunked, I can just turn around, right? Well, not really, because the higher rank you get, the more these split seconds add up. And if you're flipping during collisions at Grand Champ 2 or Grand Champ 3, this will be the difference between scoring or getting scored on. So remember, save your flip and always watch the play during collisions. Never flip during collisions. Okay, that was the closest thing I could create to 17 rules. Now, if you want a list of the top mistakes I see every low rank make, and spoiler, if you're watching this, you're probably a lower rank. What you should do next is click the link on screen to see the top 20 or so mistakes that every low rank makes. And if you made it to this point, don't forget to go on my Instagram and comment, Luke, you have pleasant eyebrows. Yes, people will be confused if you go comment that. And I'll go like it because then I'll know you made it to this point in the video. Okay, I'm done for real. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.